I would like to introduce to you our first master trainer, Dan Passarelli. Now, Dan Passarelli, he's an author, trader, and former member of the Chicago Board Options Exchange and CME Group. Dan has written two books on options trading, Trading Option Greeks and The Market Taker's Edge. He's also the founder and the CEO of Market Taker Mentoring Incorporated, which is a leading options education firm that provides online options education, options newsletters, and personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching for options traders. Now the company website is www.markettaker.com. Now Dan began his trading career on the floor of the CBOE as an equity options market maker. He also traded agricultural options and futures on the floor of the Chicago Board of Trade, which is now part of the CME Group. In 2005, Dan joined CBOE's Options Institute and began teaching both basic and advanced trading concepts to retail traders, brokers, institutional traders, financial planners and advisors, money managers, and market makers. In addition to his work with the CBOE, he has taught options strategies at the Options Industry Council, the International Securities Exchange, the CME Group, the Philadelphia Stock Exchange, and many leading options-based brokerage firms. Dan also contributes to financial media such as TheStreet.com, Fox Business News, Bloomberg Television, BNN, the National Public Radio, and the CBOE blog. Dan also has a weekly featured video on CBOE TV. So Dan, I'm going to go ahead and make you presenter now. So if you could just go ahead and take it away. Today's class is entitled The Ultimate Credit Spread Setup. Um, before I get started, I need to point out that options are not for everyone. You should read characteristics and risks of standardized options before trading. And you can get a copy of that by calling 1-888-OPTIONS. OK. <clears throat> How many credit spread traders do we have here? How many people trade credit spreads? Just give me a I do or a yes or something here. Go down to where it says questions and let me know. All right. Got a couple people who say yes. A couple people who say I'm just getting started. Some no's. We've got a couple I wishes. Well, wish no more. I'm going to show you a very, very simple, straightforward way to set up this reasonably simple spread. So let me first introduce the idea here. Credit spreads um, are basically a way to sell options. You know, for those of you who don't trade spreads or trade credit spreads, probably what you do, I mean, through my experience in working with students, is you buy options. You buy a call because you think the stock's going to go up. You buy a put because you think the stock's going to go down. And it probably doesn't work out that well for you. The reason I say that is because, <clears throat> you know, with these entry-level strategies, you've got a lot working against you. For one, you've got time decay working against you. Whenever you buy an option, um, every day it loses a little bit of value attributable to a phenomenon called time decay. And in the long run, you know, just buying calls, if that's your only strategy that you use, I've never met anybody who made a career out of doing that. I mean, it's just, it's too hard to overcome that time decay obstacle. Um, you are at such an incredible disadvantage that it's almost impossible to profit long term just simply buying options. So the next step that people tend to take in their education of options is, well, they realize, hey, you know what? Because of time decay, what if I sold options and then I put this phenomenon of time decay on my side and I make it work for me instead of work against me? And it's a great idea, but there's one important issue there. The issue that when you sell an option, you have unlimited potential risk. Now, that doesn't really sit well with a lot of traders. That's kind of exactly the opposite of everything you're taught as a trader. You know, I mean, you're taught um, take, you know, cut your losses fast and let your profits run. Limited profit potential and unlimited risk is the opposite of that. So traders need a way to overcome that. 
enter stage left, credit spreads. Credit spreads are a way to sell options and profit from time decay with limited risk. So there are two types of credit spreads, call credit spreads and put credit spreads. They're reasonably simple and straightforward. Now, if you've never traded a spread before, it can be a little intimidating. Okay, I've got two options at the same time. How does this all work? It's kind of simple and straightforward. Basically, what you do with a call credit spread is you sell an out-of-the-money call, and you want that call to stay out of the money between now and expiration. And if it does, it expires, and the premium you sold that call for, you get to keep. But again, that would open up to unlimited risk. So what you do in addition to selling that call is you buy a higher strike further out of the money call as an insurance policy. So basically, the short call, that's really your trade. That's where you're either going to make money or if it goes against you, potentially lose money. The long call, that's your insurance policy. Now, I've talked to a lot of traders in my 20 years doing this. What a lot of new traders tell me is they say, well, why would I buy that other option? I mean, it costs so much. It's a waste of money. I make my profit potential so much lower because I take in a smaller credit. Why would I want to do that? because of the limited risk aspect. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, if I could make, say, $2 by just selling a naked call, but only $1 selling a spread, you know what I can do? I can sell two spreads. So I can control my profit potential by just selling more spreads, and I'm not necessarily taking on a great deal more risk. In fact, I'm probably cutting my risk. So I can have basically the same profit potential with a fraction of the risk by doing a spread instead of a naked option. So, you know, for some people who sell like naked puts or cash secured puts, this can be a much lower risk way to do it without giving up a single penny of profit potential. Put credit spread is exactly what I'm talking about. Sell an out of the money put just like you would with cash secured put and then buy a lower strike put as an insurance policy. If I have to sell two spreads to make up for what I would otherwise make with a naked put, no problem. We can do that. So when a trader makes a trade like this, you have basically two exposures, two things that are either going to make you money or lose you money. Direction and volatility. Now, call credit spreads are slightly bearish bias. If the market falls, it's only going to help you. Put credit spreads are slightly bullish bias. If the market rises, it's only going to help you. And then we have this volatility phenomenon. Now, I saw, you know, probably about half of you guys don't trade credit spreads per my little informal poll here. In the basic classes on spreads, they don't tell you about volatility in Vega. I don't know why they don't. It is your single greatest ally when it comes to this type of spread. It's a way where you can truly put the odds in your favor, take a high probability trade and make it an even better probability. So here's what I'm going to do. Even though some people consider this an advanced concept, I'm going to explain this to you in today's class. I'm going to show you how professional traders do this. And I'm going to break it down and make it really simple. And you, even if you've never traded a spread before, you're going to understand this just like a professional does. Because, I mean, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I'm going to show you how I do it. And I'm not going to hold back. And you're going to be able to do this by the end of this class. Of course, I recommend you starting to paper trade instead of, you know, trade real money right off the bat. But you're going to intellectually be able to do this. So I have a couple of guidelines here with these spreads. You always, always, always need to know your max gain and max loss. Now that's true for any option strategy. You can't be successful if you're just kind of winging it, just kind of guessing. So you need to always calculate your max gain and max loss. I'll show you how to do that. You want to set this up as a high probability trade. Um, 
you're going to set this up as a high probability trade. So you want to set the odds in your favor. If you're doing this right, you should have many more winners than losers. <clears throat> you want to sell these with two weeks, maybe even one week's expiration on the minimum side. And you want to have no more than six weeks until expiration. Now I say that because all time decay is not created equal. If I sell an option that has a year until expiration, the time decay that I get is very, very small. I don't really make a lot each day. But if I sell an option that has a couple weeks until expiration, my time decay can be very, very big. And I stand to make potentially a lot between now and expiration. Um, we want no earnings or other news expected before expiration. Oh, um, by the way, what about using weeklies? Could we use weeklies? You know, I say maybe one week. Yes. If there are weeklies available for a credit spread, you should always look at the weeklies trade. Now, sometimes you can't set it up you can't set up a weekly trade in such a way where you make enough money to, you know, remember you have a maximum profit potential here. Sometimes the maximum profit potential is so small that it's not worth making the trade, like too much risk versus your reward. So I want you to always look at the weekly candidates, but they're, they're a little harder to find. A, a good weekly trade is a little bit harder to find, but always look there first. You probably have to go two, three, four weeks out. So here's what we're going to do. Two simple steps. You know, when I was down in the trading pits on the CBOA trading floor, I traded credit spreads. And when I would analyze my spreads, these are the steps that I would take. I've been doing this a long, long time. And credit spreads are still, to this day, probably the most commonly traded spread that I trade. I trade a lot of these guys in my days. Here, here are the two simple steps. Start with direction. Find a stock that has hit support or resistance and bounced off. Use that support or resistance level to set the potential short options strike. Then we're going to move on to volatility and see if it's elevated. We're only going to trade the credit spread if volatility is elevated. <clears throat> this is sort of the you know, I hate to use the, ter the word secret because, you know, in the professional trading world, this is no secret. Everybody does this. Everybody looks at the volatility and only puts on credit spreads if volatility is elevated. But when I talk to a lot of traders who are, you know, what the brokers call retail traders, people who aren't down on the trading floor, for some reason they don't look at volatility and, and they, those are the students who come to me and say, hey, I can't figure out why, why I'm not successful. It's because of this one step. Only sell the credit spreads if volatility is elevated. Now, how do you check the volatility? I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that in just a second. This is a trade, and these prices are, are not current. This is actually from geez, a year ago or something. I keep this in my presentation instead of using something from like this week because this was like the quintessential trade setup. This was really the ultimate credit spread setup. It was such, I mean, I can't even tell you. The analytics on this, the support and resistance, the volatility, the whole picture was perfect. So I'm going to show you like the ultimate setup right here. And when you see this again, and you'll see it, you scan through, you know, you might have to scan through 20, 30 stocks, but you can find something in the market like this right now. So Ralph Lauren was trading at 151 bucks. There was very strong support on both the daily candle chart and the weekly candle chart. Very strong resistance at 165 bucks. You can see it touched 165 bucks here over the past couple of months and bounced off. If we spread this out to weekly candles, 
except for this area here between February and May, 165 bucks was a very strong resistance level on the weekly chart. So we've established this resistance level. Now it's 14 bucks above where the current stock is trading. It's like 9% above where the current stock is trading. Okay, make a mental note of that. Then we pulled out, again, I feel like it's almost kind of silly to use the word secret weapon here, but because so many traders fail to use this and are not successful because of that, I'm calling it the secret weapon. If you trade in an options-friendly brokerage account, and there's a lot of them out there, okay, and you trade online, you probably have access to volatility charts. Maybe you've never used them before. Maybe you've skimmed through all the tools available to you by your broker, and you said, oh, volatility chart, okay, what's this? I don't really know what that is, so I'm not going to look at it. From this point forward, start looking at it. The volatility chart shows you two things. One, it shows you the historical volatility. Two, it shows you the implied volatility. The historical volatility is this grayish line that you'll see sort of near the bottom part of this chart. Uh, somebody's asking here about um, a brokerage firm if they're option friendly and have volatility charts, think or swim. Yes, Thinkorswim has volatility charts. They are a very option-friendly brokerage firm. You you can get this information using Thinkorswim. Yes. Okay. So the grayish line that is implied. Excuse me. That is historical volatility. So what's that mean? Historical volatility is kind of the volatility you think of when you think about volatility. It's a measure of how much the underlying stock has moved around lately. Has the stock price gotten more volatile or less volatile? That's what answers that question. Right now, the volatility, as you can see down here on your screen, it's about, what, 22? A couple sessions ago, it was down, or excuse me, not 22, 26. A couple sessions ago, it was down about 22. A month ago, it was down at about 20. Back in the middle of August, whoops. Back in the middle of August, it was up around 36. So this tells you, is the stock getting more or less volatile? <clears throat> it can also be used to compare the volatility of two different stocks. You know, this is Ralph Lauren. We can compare it to Tesla. We can compare it to GE. Which one's more volatile? Because, you know, sometimes when you look at a chart, you know, they scale the chart. They don't show you stock prices zero to infinity. You know, when you pull up a stock chart, it just shows you the relevant range for what you're looking at. So sometimes your screen could be taken up by stock price, you know, 200 to 600. Sometimes your screen could be taken up by, you know, stock prices 32 to 35. And both of the charts look like they move around the same amount, but a stock that's moving in a three buck range versus a $400 range is a lot less volatile. So it is so important to use the historical volatility to get a feel for the volatility of the chart because you really can't tell very accurately by just looking at the stock chart. Now specifically what they use is they use the annualized standard deviation. They take the last 30 closing prices and they plug them into a formula and find what they call the standard deviation. And then they annualize that standard deviation to make the last 30 days representative of a one-year period. So then everything's normalized and standardized. Now, there is another line here. It is implied volatility. <clears throat> implied volatility is basically how cheap or expensive options are. When you look at an option chain, and you know maybe you're just doing something as simple as buying a call, 
if the call is three dollars and thirty cents, is that cheap or expensive? Is that a lot of money or a little bit of money? I don't know. You can't really tell by just looking at this the price. There's so many factors that affect the value of that call. There's the direction of the underlying stock. There's time decay like we're talking about. There's volatility. So looking at this volatility chart, this normalizes the price. This tells you, like, you know, if you look at this, today the volatility is 31. Back the day before earnings, it was 44. So options were a lot more expensive going into earnings. And then when earnings came out, they got really cheap. Why do you think that is? You know why? Because going into earnings, people buy options to hedge. If they own the stock, they're buying puts to protect themselves. If they don't own the stock, they're buying calls or puts to speculate on earnings or even straddles. But then after earnings, they don't need that insurance anymore. So that's why, that's why we look at this, because this tells us that given the supply and demand forces out there in the market, are these options cheap or expensive? Am I buying something completely overpriced? Am I selling something completely underpriced? Or am I getting a good deal on it? So here's how we do this. Now, earnings are unique scenarios, obviously. They only happen four times a year, for, typically for a stock. So we're going to ignore these price rises, these mountains of, of option prices rising going into earnings. We're going to pretend they're not there. And then we're going to compare the current implied volatility to, to past implied volatility. Now, aside from these kind of mountains going into earnings, implied volatility is probably in the middle, maybe even the top half of the six-month range, again, blocking out these earnings dates. And implied volatility is above historical volatility. Now, that's an indication that volatility is expensive. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take advantage of this expensive volatility and we're going to sell a spread. Remember, resistance was at 165. So here's what we do. Sell the 165 calls and buy the 170 calls. <clears throat> we're going to sell the 165 calls at about a buck 45. We're going to buy the 170 calls at 80 cents. So we're going to collect a total net credit of 65 cents. So if we sell this spread, sell, sell the 165 calls, buy the 170 calls, what's our objective? Why are we doing that? Why is that helpful to us? And how can that make us money? <clears throat> this is called a profit and loss diagram, or just simply a P&L diagram. And it explains your profit or loss on the option position at expiration given different stock prices. So remember, when we started out, the stock was basically way down here at $151 a share. Right? <clears throat> so the stock was $151 a share. What if the stock stayed at about $151 a share? for the next five weeks or whatever it was until expiration. And expiration comes along and the options, are, and the stock is still at 151. What happens to the 165 calls? Well, they expire, right? When options are out of the money at expiration, they expire and they disappear. And any premium you collected when you sold them is yours to keep and your position is gone, which is good. That means you reach your maximum profit potential. That's the objective. I mean, if the 165 calls are out of the money at expiration, the 170 calls are out of the money at expiration too, so the whole thing disappears. And as long as the stock is anywhere below 165, I'd have a profit of 65 cents. So that's, 
that's a pretty powerful thing if you think about what we're trying to do here. <coughs> we sold the 165 calls and bought the 170 calls, collected 65 cents, and the stock was way down at 151. If the stock would have fallen, I'd make money. If the stock would stay where it is, I make money. If the stock rises 5%, I make money. If the stock rises 14 bucks, I make money. So I've, this is what is referred to as a high probability trade. A lot of different market scenarios can play out and I have a winning trade. <clears throat> you know, if you think of trading in stock prices as like a bell curve, it's not really a bell curve, it's actually a log normal distribution. But, you know, if you're not familiar with a log normal distribution, just think of it like a bell curve. You know, like if the current stock price is in the middle, the probability of a small move occurring in either direction is most likely. There's about a 50% chance of it rising, 50% chance of it falling. So if it falls, there's 50% chance I win. If it rises, a lot of that 50% chance is still I win. And since small moves are more likely than big moves, I've got a very, very large chance of winning on this. So what if the stock really takes off, it rises 10, 11, 12 percent in, in, in this few weeks that we have this on? Not a likely scenario, but it can happen. Well, that's where I could run into trouble. If the stock rises so far that it's, it's even above 170, then both of these calls are in the money at expiration. If the, calls, if the stock's above 170, my 165 calls would get assigned, and I'd short stock at 165. My 170 calls would get exercised, and I'd buy that stock back at 170, so I'd lock in a loss of five bucks. But I take into account the 65 cents that I collected when I made the trade. So really, I only end up losing, you know, four dollars and 35 cents. Now you might look at that and say, "Well, wait a minute, I can lose more than I can make. I don't like that." Well, yeah, but think about it. Your chances of winning are so great that you're willing to do that, you know? <clears throat> it's, you, your payout structure has to be congruent with your probability of success. If your chances of making money is 90% chance of making money, you can't expect a you know one-to-one -one payout. It's not really reasonable. Like, what if your chances of winning the lottery were 50-50? Would you spend a dollar ticket to win $10 million if you had a 50-50 chance? Of course. The government couldn't run that uh, game anymore, could they? Because your payout structure is always congruent with your probability of success. So here, your probability of success is so high that you're willing to accept this. Any rational person would, given the right trade setup. But for it to be the right trade setup, you need to have the right volatility setup. <clears throat> you need to have volatility that is expensive. Why? Because that means the options are more expensive. If the options are more expensive, I get a bigger credit, which is a bigger maximum potential profit. And because my maximum loss is a function of my maximum profit, I get a smaller max loss also. I mean, here, let's go back a slide. If I only collected 50 cents on this, then my maximum profit would be 50 cents, and my maximum loss would be 450. Because this is always five bucks minus my credit received. So I always end up with a way better payout structure when I trade expensive volatility. And you know, this is if you've never thought about it this way, it might seem a little bit esoteric, but I'm not really saying anything that you, you don't already know that doesn't come natural. I mean, think about it. Really what I'm saying is you should only sell things that are too expensive. Like, are you gonna sell your house at $100? Probably not, unless you have a really bad house. 
somebody came and said, hey, I'll write you a check for your house for $100 million, would you sell your house? Somebody on this presentation might have a house worth $100 million, but it's, it's not typical. I'm emotionally attached to my house, but if you want to write me a check for $100 million, here's the keys, babe. You can keep the furniture, too. When somebody wants to pay you too much for something, that's good. And that's what you're doing here. <clears throat> this can be applied to commodity futures options, to equity options, to index options, to ETX, ETF options, to any options, even commodities, bonds, grains, what have you, softs. <clears throat> So as far as the volatility indicator goes, the volatility indicator is the skill of reading a chart. There's no number that says, hey, if this is above 50, do this, if this is below 50, do this. It's a little bit of an act reading volatility charts, but I'm going to show you how you can learn that in a second. So the strengths of this trade were pretty simple and straightforward. The spread had resistance. It had something telling me, <coughs> hey, Every time the stock got to 165, it came back down. So let's put on a trade that makes money if the stock stays below 165. Kind of simple and straightforward. Stock had to rise basically about 10% to have a losing trade. And at this time, the market was not overly strong. So I had a lot going for me on this trade. I actually made this trade, and it, and it worked out great. The stock actually did rise, and it came close to 165 but it came back down. So the trade was, it was this nice, strong setup. Volatility was high, made the, the trade really attractive. So you do these simple analyses, trade a directionally biased, um, you know, when you have a directionally biased scenario, put on a, a spread. If you're bearish, you put on a call spread, bullish, put on a put spread. Trade only when there's elevated vol, and then you know do a sanity check. Make sure you're not doing it where you're collecting a penny on the spread, but you can lose four ninety nine or something. <clears throat> Just kind of feel it out and make sense. Paper trade this a good ten times before you actually put it on, and you'll be in great shape. Now there are some questions here, and there's kind of some good questions. I'm going to get to those in just a second. If you have any other questions, feel free to send those in. I want to tell you about a way where you can get trade ideas and learn how to craft trades just like this using volatility charts and, and the likes. I can get you all the trade ideas you need every single day. Would you think your trading would improve if a professional who's been in the options business for over 25 years, if he gave you trades, trade ideas every single day? and showed you exactly how to trade them, you think you'd be a more successful trader? Well, you can enroll in the Market Taker Live Advantage group coaching class and get three months of trade ideas. These classes are every single day between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock Central Time. It's a half hour after the market opens. Every day, you're, you'll get 15 to up to 20 trade ideas every day. That's, that's over 1,000 trade ideas if you enroll for three months. And maybe you can't make classes every day, that's fine. The classes are recorded. About half of our students sign up and never attend the live classes. Think of what you, what you would pay to have somebody who's been in options for 25 years give you 15 trade ideas that you can trade every single day. Think what that number is. You're not going to pay that number. You're going to pay less. But I'm also going to give you three months of the MTM email hotline. This is basically unlimited email access to our staff. If you have any options question, even some of the specific, like, hey, I lost money on this Tesla trade I have. I heard there's an adjustment strategy. Can you help me you know, potentially reverse this loss? Yeah, send us questions just like that. We sell this service for $1,000. It's going to be yours free today. And I'm going to give you a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, just me and you. We're going to look at trades that you have in your account. We're going to do it all online. <clears throat> if you sign up for a three-month uh, group coaching session, I'm going to give you one full hour of my time. I sell that for 500 bucks an hour. You're going to get that for free. So this is what we call one-on-one -on -one coaching. We're going to look at real trades you have on and talk about them. And for the first three people who enroll today, you've got to be quick. Mark 
gmail.com slash gc underscore special. I'm going to throw in a copy of my book, The Market Taker's Edge. I wrote two books. The Market Taker's Edge is published by McGraw-Hill. you got to be one of the first three people to take advantage of this, either the three-month or the six-month course. Obviously, you're going to save a lot of money with the three-month course because normally I sell that for $9.97 plus a $1,000 email hotline bonus plus a $500 one-on-one -on -one coaching bonus. That's a $2,500 value. You're getting that for only 500 bucks and for the first three people I'm throwing in a free book. Or if you want to save a little bit more money, you can do the six month access. You're going to get two one on ones with that. That's a $3,700 bonus for only $747. Obviously the six month is a better deal, um, but you're free to do whichever and you get a free book if you're one of the first three people. Marketaker.com slash GC special. Now do we have any questions about uh, the class? Um, T asked me if I'm the same person that frequents this one particular trading room. I am not. Um, Jesse says, how can you use theta to improve your trade selection? <clears throat> you can use theta to improve your trade selection because theta measures your time decay. Remember I said that shorter term options have a higher rate of time decay than longer term options, theta measures that. So you should always look at all your Greeks. I mean, this is only a 45 minute presentation, so I couldn't cover, you know, every single thing that I possibly know in 45 minutes. Uh, that would probably take a little bit longer than 45 minutes. But um, I do always, always recommend looking at your Greeks, you'd rather sell a spread that has a higher theta rather than a shorter, uh, a lower theta. Um, Kisraj, I hope I pronounced that correctly, is there a template that calculates profit? Yeah, the maximum profit is the premium received. That's it. Uh, Edward had a question earlier. How do you decide on the $5 spread and not a $2 spread. Any thoughts? Well, typically what you would do, Edward, is you would, you would trade two consecutive strikes. <clears throat> so if I sell the 50 calls, if the next highest strike is the 52 and a half calls, I do the 52 and a half calls. If the next highest strike is the 55 calls, I do the 55 calls. If the next highest strike is the 51 calls, and probably do the 51 calls. Uh, you know, the more advanced you get, I could kind of flesh that out and give some better tips. But for right now, I mean, half the class has never traded credit spreads before. Just do consecutive strikes, and you'll be doing okay. Uh, Tony says, "Wow, Tony, this is a long question, man. <clears throat> um, if you guys could keep your questions pretty short, because it's it's kind of you know." People lose interest when I'm reading your real long questions, okay? But I'll, I'll, I'll answer this. Tony says, why not sell the bull put spread on this setup? After it bounces from support at 150, since it's near support, and the premium would be higher, then you could add the bear call side as it approaches resistance. What do you think? Yeah, and, and basically what you're talking about there is legging into what they call an iron condor. Um, under some circumstances, I'm fine with that. Um, <clears throat> there are advantages and disadvantages. I mean, the advantages are exactly like you point out. You get um, double credits. You get a credit for the call spread and a credit for the put spread. The disadvantage, of course, is you can lose if the stock goes too high or too low. But um, there's nothing wrong with that. I didn't do that on this particular trade, um, but could have. Selling the 150 calls, your puts rather, I'd rather sell them where the stock has to do something highly unlikely for me to lose money. Selling the 50 puts, the stock only has to fall a buck. So I don't like that quite as much. Um, but, yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. <clears throat> uh, Klaus says, some other offer rather than group coaching, weekly option newsletter. Well, I mean, sure, Klaus. I mean, I, I've got it in options newsletter, you can go to my website, markettaker.com, click on learn to trade and read about the newsletter. Um, there's a really great um, price on that. This, you know, 
in order to kind of help out the presentation here and, and give you guys some value, I wanted to do something special for you. Um, the last times I offered this group coaching package, it was for more money than this, for really significantly more money than this, even like as a special. I mean, the normal price is $9.97 plus a $1,000 email hotline plus one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I, I really wanted to give you guys a ton of value, and it's a great way to do it. And you know what? Uh, just because some of you guys might be quicker than others, um, anybody who signs up during this live class, I'm going to give that free book to Market Taker's Edge. Uh, John says, I know nothing about options. How can I learn from a pro like yourself? Um, sign up for this group coaching class. You're going to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. Do that. Worry says, do you only do stocks, any commodities, indices? Um, that class is equity options, ETF options, and index options. We don't uh, talk about commodity options there, but uh, we could talk about that in the one-on-one -on -one coaching or in the email hotline for sure. Uh, David says, do you look for implied vol to be greater than historical vol by any specific percentage? Yeah, by two points, but not more than 20 points. That's my rule of thumb. <clears throat> David says, do you look for, wait a minute. Oh, I think I just deleted the wrong question here. Somebody just asked me something about the class. Um, you might want to fire that back at me. I think I accidentally deleted it. Uh, Bobber says, B. Bauer says, so the probability of winning is 90% and the size of the loss is 9 to 1, and it's a break-even game. Well, see, this is where trading becomes not just a science but also an art, and you need a little bit of intuition, uh, and you need to look at some things besides just the raw numbers. Like, resistance is really important to this setup, but it's hard to quantify that. You know, so I would say that because there's strong resistance there, that that makes my chances of winning greater than what Delta does. Uh, last question. This is all I can do here, guys. Adam asks, are there differences using index options versus ETF options that follow indexes? Yeah, there's a lot of differences. Um, send me an email on that, guys. Um, and once again, the URL to sign up for this, marketticket.com slash GC underscore special. All right. You can email me, dan at markettaker.com, if you have any further questions. Uh, I hope you guys found this to be an informative presentation, and thank you for uh, having me on today.